Hey guys, welcome to Planes Over It. And uh, before we actually start off with this video, uh, we have hit thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel, and uh, thank you all for uh, the tremendous support that Planes Over It has got. And uh, this is now going to be a special uh, video that I'm making since we have thousand subscribers. Just to celebrate that, uh, we're going to talk something about uh, interviews, airline interviews, and uh, also I'm going to discuss with you some questions that I faced in a zero hour type rated A320 interview. So that will give you actually an insight into an airline interview and uh, it's important you prepare your CPL uh, fundamentals as well. Okay, and uh, good luck for the interview guys. Uh, so let's uh, start off with a few quick tips that I would like to give. First most important thing, be on time. Alright, so do not at any cost be late. That's a big put off. So just try, plan your travel early. If it's in a different city, plan it further early. Be half an hour, 45 minutes early. Now, a uh, lot of people have this uh, different view, it doesn't matter what you wear, you know, but it does. So dress formal and always wear a smile, okay? Greet everybody, so as soon as you enter the room, uh, you know, you can greet everybody, whether it's good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, you could uh, ask how, how they are today, you know, anything of that sort. That sets a tone for the interview. And uh, the most important thing, it's funny, but yes, do not sit unless offered. So just go up to the desk or whatever it is, whether they've asked you for documents, but do not sit yet. If uh, the interviewer asks you to sit down, then have a, have a seat. And uh, sit upright with feet firmly placed on the ground. Do not really have any fidgety movements, playing with the pen, moving your legs around, too much of hand movements. All that uh, are a sign of uh, nervousness. So be you know uh, firmly placed on ground maintain effective eye contact uh, now uh, looking at the walls ceilings carpet and all that uh, is also a sign of uh, your low on confidence so whenever you at least when you answer look into the eye and answer whether uh, of course there are going to be at least two people or more right so whenever you do look into the eyes of the interview and answer that that shows confidence be confident, stay calm, whatever is asked, be confident, do not just, you know, uh, feel nervous about anything. Take your time to frame your answer, it's very important. You can take few seconds rather than just blabbering out anything. So, and always talk facts, especially in airline interviews, this, uh, this thing really matters and uh, you have to actually just talk facts. Do not lie. Now, this is the biggest point I would like to give in an airline interview because trust me uh, those guys who are taking your interview are perhaps flying as many years as your age is perhaps so right they will just pick up anything that you try to you know fake or anything so do not lie at any cost if it's if you do not know the answer just be frank and tell them sir I do not know this so that shows that you are ready to accept and ready to learn and another important point do not over answer if you know something answer it keep it short and crisp and brief the more you answer it the tendency of the interviewer is to pick up points out of that answer and ask you further questions so if you've asked something just be to the point okay so i guess uh, these few quick tips uh, will uh, keep you in place and uh, let's begin a few questions uh, now this interview is going to ha have a mixture of 320 and also cpl based questions so if you're not already type rated do not worry uh, we will, when you do the course through with me on the YouTube, you will learn a lot of stuff. So just, just, I am just trying to share, you know, questions that were there. So now in the 320, there are some memory items that have to be remembered. And uh, these are the list of the memory items and prepare all of them. You know, EGW, EGPWS is enhanced ground proximity warning system, emergency descent, unreliable airspeed, and the loss of braking, stall recovery, stall warning at liftoff, TCAS, wind shear, wind shear head. So uh, some people even might tell you crew incapacitation, but I think in the recent times it has been removed, but you can still go through. I'll try to put a link uh, on the video description so that you can download all the memory items. Uh, remember all of them, the interview will for sure ask you one of them, whichever is your favorite. He you would just go with which one is your favorite. So if you say TCAS, you have to, you know, remember the TCAS and tell him the memory item for that. So memory items are, uh, by the way, uh, memory items are, you know, a list of uh, actions that you have to remember and because TCAS is immediate, right? So immediately you have to respond to that and do an action. So these are memory items in the 320. 
Okay, how would you recover stall was asked. Uh, so this is the basic stuff, nose down, wings level, power, check loss of attitude. How would you recover abnormal attitude? So this was also asked uh, to me just to confuse uh, because uh, for nose high and nose low, they're different procedures, all right? So check power, for if your nose high, that is, you know, if your nose high, check pitch and then bank. If your nose low, first wings level and then pitch. So if your nose low, you first wings level and then uh, pull your control column to get back. What are the color of the hydraulics? Very, uh, you may feel very stupid because of this question, but then that's how it was asked. Green, blue, yellow are the hydraulics. We will do the hydraulic uh, video as well, so that all will be clear. This is, there are three different colors. Now, what is generally is happening in interview is they will start with something that is really stupid and very easy, and then when they get into the talks, then you may actually feel the heat. So, color of the hydraulics is very simple for any 320 type rated guy. So, next question starts now. Uh, what is the hydraulic pressure of each hydraulic system? So when we do the hydraulic system, you'll know that it's 3000 PSI when operating normally and blue operates at 2500 PSI when powered by the RAT, ram air turbine that is. We'll discuss it in the coming videos. Can you start the APU at 39,000 feet? APU is an auxiliary power unit. So yes, it can be started and operated, but only for electrical usage. So all this is there in the limitations. Uh, when you actually uh, do... Uh, you know study for the interview for 320 part do not forget to do limitations they can ask you engine limitations apu starter limitations you know flap flight controls limitations and so on so limitations are a very important part uh, that you know what your aircraft is capable to do can you now this now see the follow up question can you start apu at 39000 feet the next question is can you can you start apu at 39000 feet with emergency elect config so emergency elect config is where you have lost the whole electrical supply of the aircraft and you are literally running just on batteries so no why now the reason is if you run uh, if in emergency elect config if you start the apu what will happen is first thing it is to be started below 25000 feet the next follow up question you can see the eighth one here why only 25000 feet so the the interviewer is going to push you every step you take forward is going to push you behind so now why only 25,000 feet was asked to me so the simpler answer if you start starting more and more because the air is denser at lower levels and since we are using batteries to start the APU you will drain it faster hence you need to give it the best chance to start at the first attempt itself rather than you know trying it over and over again what is V1 speed? Um, this one is uh, nothing to do with the 320 or is just a general. Uh, so it is a go or no go speed. That's like the simplest and the crisp answer you can give. It's a no or a no go speed. And if you go by the books, it is the decision speed below which you may consider a reject takeoff. Now see the question. After each question, there's some sort of a follow up question. This one had what will happen if you rotate before V1? So the answer is you will expect not to lift off, of course, because you don't have the speed to you know lift off and if rotated aggressively you may hit the tail on the runway okay what type of crosswind landing would you do on the a320 now uh, airbus recommends a wings level uh, approach also called the crabbed approach here and uh, during flare just just as you flare the aircraft you what you do is kick the rudder kick as in i don't mean like a real harsh kick but you know you use the rudder to align the aircraft with the runway center line but even if you have a st really strong crosswind, then you can use some sort of little bit bank, maximum of five degrees just to keep it fine. Apart from that, crabbed approach is the one that has to be answered. Now, now comes interesting question here. Now situational awareness stuff. If green hydraulic drains out at the parking bay, engineer tells you we have only yellow hydraulic can. Would you still use it? So now what happens is, now these are questions that you will not find in FCOMs, you will not find in you know any any manual. But you have to realize that all the hydraulic fuels are of the same fluid, same type. The color differentiation that we discussed earlier, green, blue, yellow, is just for us to know what aircraft systems are being operated by which hydraulic system. So this is a question of situational awareness and smartness. It will not be mentioned anywhere in your FCOM, anywhere, but still you just have to think smartly. Now come some, some uh, MET questions as well. Uh, what is southwest monsoon so the answers are as follows it is the main monsoon occurring from the june from june to september on the indian subcontinent 80 percent of india gets its supply from this monsoon summer 
what is northeast monsoon then comes up so it is the retreating monsoon that occurs post september state of tamil nadu is the one that actually gets rainfall almost i think 50 to 60 percent of tamil nadu you know uh, gets rainfall because of northeast monsoon so you know be good in met as well so you know that's what i said do not uh, leave cpl do not think that it's a technical 320 interview it will have a mixture of mixed bag uh, another question i think that was asked was also el nino with the, that's a global effect so uh, western disturbances you can also uh, go for you know um, nor'westers what are nor'westers and such such major phenomenons uh, phenomenons you can go through met what will you do another situational awareness question uh, what will you do if your captain or your pilot is incapacitated on finals at 1500 feet so you actually first thing you do is initiate a go around then inform the etc for assistance on landing call the cabin crew and strap the incapacitated pilot and return back to land asap now sometimes you know these questions will actually get really tricky this one was very simple we might give you an engine failure on the same thing what will you do with a pilot incapacitated on finals at 1500 feet and your engine has failed just now So you know it depends on different situational awarenesses. You have an engine fire. What are your decision making? He's gonna check your decision making on this. Uh, what are tailwind limitations for the aircraft? Three twenty. That is takeoff is fifteen knots and landing is also fifteen knots. But if you are auto landing, uh, it'll be ten knots. Okay. The limitations are very important. I think almost uh, six questions were asked uh, related to limitations. Now comes some CPL technical stuff. How do jet engines work? Uh, all I answered was like Brayton cycle and constant pressure, and that's all. The answer is done, because if you answer the, there are keywords, all right. For some questions, there are keywords. If you use those keywords, that's more than enough. Now, suppose if you are, uh, how do piston engine work? It's constant volume cycle, and it's the auto cycle, right? So, it's important you use the keywords, and the interview will be just pleased enough that you know you perhaps obviously know the stuff if you're using keywords. What is bypass air in the jet engine? So the secondary air of the jet engine is the bypass air. and is responsible for producing maximum thrust from the jet engine is the one that goes from the top not from the core of the jet engine what is swept back wing and why it is used now this is also very interesting so a wing that angles backward with respect to fuselage is a swept back now swept back the primary application is to increase m crate mark crate because the swept back wing delays the shock wave and improves performance at high speeds close to speed of sound so uh, you know uh, what happens is uh, the air flow hits at a different angle so you're basically fooling the air flow that you are uh, traveling slow so you get more m crit increases m crit so you can actually go for uh, you know discussions on uh, mac number so what is m crit then see again a, a follow up question came from whatever i answered so what is m crit what is mach tuck so m crit is the lowest mach number when some point on the aircraft reaches speed of sound and at speed close to mach 1 aircraft has tendency to pitch nose down so this is mach tuck and it is countered by a mach trimmer which varies the pitch as required to maintain level flight and uh, also you can uh, go for uh, you know uh, learning from uh, uh, if you are looking for uh, performance and all they you could also go for climb gradients uh, you know the first segment second segment third segment fourth segment that was asked as well and uh, you can also in navigation you can uh, go for you know great circles rum lines basic stuff cpl so do not you know what i'm trying to tell is do not eliminate cpl in a technical interview as well because be sure that they will ask you cpl as well how confident you are in your basic fundamentals okay so i guess uh, that's all for this video i hope you liked it and uh, share this video so that uh, it can help people who are attending interviews the most important thing is uh, you know um, be confident when you answer do not lie of course and uh, if you like the video please subscribe to the youtube channel like the facebook page for regular updates give the video a thumbs up and if you like the video do not share do not forget to share it too and uh, comment below if you have any doubts uh, we'll talk about more questions cheers and happy landings guys have a great day bye bye take care